What's up guys? Welcome back to another one. Sorry I've been uh, on a little bit of a hiatus here. We have been hunting. I uh, lost some footage uh, on our, our very first opener teal hunt. Really uh, took the wind out of my sails. Uh, and in the midst of trying to hunt, being a, a somewhat of a novice uh, waterfowler, it's been hard trying to get the camera out and get it ready and and getting those shots while you're shooting. Uh, so I don't have a lot of footage. We got some woodies. I just don't have like a lot. And now let me know if you want me to put to together a little compilation of what I do have, we could probably do that. But I just don't have like a lot to bring you guys a good full episode. But today I have something pretty cool that I've been working on. And uh, some people asked me how I do it because they thought it was cool and and they thought that they might want to get into it too so we're gonna get right into it today we are prepping a goose wing for a wing mount wing mount however you want to do it uh you could put it on a piece of driftwood you could put it in a little shadow box you could just do about anything you want with it i only have one goose wing today i would have preferred a set you know a pair uh but the other wing just uh wasn't looking so hot so we just stuck with the one i'm new to this i've only done some teal and uh and, and you know those, those small birds so now we're gonna jump from the the smaller end of the waterfowl spectrum up to the big end and uh well let's get right into it all right guys what i have here is i believe a lesser wing from a goose it's now starting to thaw out so we can uh, flex the joint and uh, get the span you know get, get it get it open uh, it's important when you're choosing a bird to do this with that you're picking something that looks good you don't want it to be all shot up you know but not every wing is gonna look perfect so sometimes you know, especially if you're just getting into it, just get wings off of whatever birds. Even if you're not going to keep them or save them, you know, you can still practice. And there's a cat walking underneath me right now because uh, I'll let you know we got three cats here. And they're really fascinated with these bird wings. Um, I'm not going to flip it over because I'll probably get kicked off of YouTube for that. Uh, but basically, on the other side here, there's a knuckle. There's a joint. Because uh, we clean the bird first and then we cut around the joint uh to preserve the integrity of the whole wing yeah see we got a little kitty cat right there so what you really want to do with a with a bird like a goose is get as much meat as you can off of the wing uh and that's really the main part because that's what we're really preserving uh see these wings they're n they're not gonna they're not gonna rot you know not anytime soon anyways mainly what you're worried about is the meat in inside the cartilage and stuff now i don't know the anatomy of these birds really well uh if i did and i was a better taxidermist i not even a taxidermist but uh i would probably go in here and cut it open from the inside and get a lot of that meat out maybe even do like a really good strip down of the bird uh but this is a pretty solid wing. We took a lot. We took a lot off of it. Um, let me see if I can show you the other side without showing the bad stuff. You can see right there. It's, looks pretty decent. Got a lot of the little inner fluff under there. Uh, but anyways, good looking wing regardless. This ought to be fun. What we got to do here is get it on this board. And I want to put it on this board upside down so that i can place borax on top of the meat area uh, and that's really what we're trying to preserve here the most but this wing is going to have to sit like this for about a month month and a half maybe even a little longer because it's so big uh to dry out and when it dries out how you have the wings configured it'll be stuck there it, there's once it dries up, there won't be no more manipulation. So everything that you do in the beginning is going to count towards the final product. I learned that the hard way uh, 
just kind of took some green wing teal wings and stuck them in there and and uh, just did it well I didn't take real good care of how I had the all the feathers shaped up and everything and uh, it just didn't look really nice they didn't look totally poopy but they didn't look very nice it's not something that somebody would pay for uh, so yeah I'm gonna start uh, getting everything laid out and uh, hopefully can show you without uh, any demonetization all right guys I had to spare you the gory stuff because uh, of YouTube of course what well, we got it down on the wood uh, I learned a new technique from a guy I was just kind of winging it on some stuff I learned online just a quick search but I seen how another fellow was doing it and talked to him for a while and and see what he did and got a really a much better understanding of how to do this so here we go we got it implemented right now so what we have is the wing fully open see how we got a nice a nice gap see I can groom the feathers when it's done but we have a nice split gap in there really looks good we got a good shape on it let's see if we can get that viewed it's got a pretty good shape it's it's like a half cup it's not fully cupped but it's like a half cup now what I did here is you'll find that as you feel the bone these are birds have hollow bones that's how they fly because they're so light if you, there's a nice stretch of bone through here and then there's a little bit of uh cartilage in where the feathers go so i split in between the bone and the cartilage i actually might have went through the bone itself actually feels like i might have went through the bone uh that's just a roofing nail yeah, went through really easy and I'm just using this is just a piece of like veneered uh, MDF this is just fiberboard uh, but basically we got it now you can kind of get an idea of the curve here and I saved you guys a little little bit of that gory stuff but you can see right down in here I have my other nail now that's how you get the split I started with this nail got it in there really good and then I took this whole wing like this if you would assume it was like this I took it and I opened it up and I opened it up until I got a really good shape how I wanted it and uh, that's that's it we're gonna put some more paper towel in there we're gonna try to dry it out real good I might even let the heat gun go over it just a little bit we're not gonna try to cook the meat um, yeah we're gonna that's all you got to do dry it out real good uh, I'm gonna lay it flat and uh, just cover that that cut site in borax uh, and that's gonna be it and then after that I'm gonna let it sit for about a month month and a half I'm gonna go back through and check it might brush some of that old crusty borax out in a couple of weeks and uh maybe place some some fresh borax in there just so that it helps the helps the cure process go through really well the cats are really excited to go check this bird out so i better get it out of here before i don't have no bird left uh like i said i'm not a taxidermist by no means uh i just started doing this because i like to eat my birds and uh i don't have a lot of money to get birds mounted i'm disabled uh i got the muscular dystrophy so this is something that i can do at home to kind of remember the birds that that uh i shot or that me and my buddy shot together uh and whatnot um hang on i'll go get the mount that i just finished and show you so guys like i said mind the mess don't mind the mess uh still moving a lot of stuff that's getting delivered over here but this is my first uh, this is my first mount it looks pretty good in the light uh in some of the photos it doesn't look so good but this is what i'm getting at with how you want to make sure that your wings are where they should be and how with a goose it doesn't matter so much but this this wing now i could probably glue that over i could probably get away with that but realistically would have liked to have had it perfect while it's set 
and I don't know if you can see from this side this is like fluffed up a little bit which I don't know if it's necessarily natural but uh, it looks a little weird to me and I know it's not the best blue wings kind of all over the place you know might have got shot in here there's some little there's some little stray pieces going on in here I tried to layer out the feathers about as best you can it's not gonna be perfect I mean I'm kind of a perfectionist and I know if I don't let it go that I'm just gonna drive myself up the wall till I get it right so but for a first round not too bad got this piece of driftwood very cool piece of driftwood it was a much larger piece uh, and then I found there's our kitty cat wanting to check all this stuff out what's up sparkles man that's my squirrel hunter right there um, we got this piece of driftwood while we were coming back from a hunting trip actually and it was a much larger piece it came out let's see here get a better you get a better idea of it looking with a background yeah I mean it came out here and it came out there and and everything and uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to make this a wall mount or a table mount so what I actually did was I cut everything off right here right here right here on an angle like this so that if you my buddy who I made this for if he wants to take it off of the base and attach it to the wall he could do that definitely could do that uh, basically all I did here was I drilled into the wings and this one actually I didn't go through the I didn't want to I didn't want to mess it up I got scared to mess it up so this actually goes into the bone because the bone is hollow and then it's glued in and then the wire just goes in a drill hole through the wood. Oh, there's a cat in a bag. <laughs> Get out of there. My girlfriend's gonna kick my ass because that bag that the cat just jumped in was full of goose meat. <laughs> Get out of here. They're starting to swarm me. They're starting to swarm. But anyways, see how the see how the cats like it they want to mess with that stuff come on leave it alone go find some squirrels so we can shoot them um yeah basically hindsight you want to make sure that your gaps and your feathers are nice and, and split equally it's about aesthetic like you can see the double layer of feathers how it goes through there but then it looks all messed up right here i could have probably avoided that i probably could have fixed that uh just wasn't sure that that was going to, you know, I couldn't have foreseen that. The base, just a piece of cut lumber that I ground down and sanded out. Uh, when I cut this, I cut it while it was wet, which is what you don't want to do. You don't want to cut driftwood while it's wet because it broke in two. Now this, this piece is actually glued uh, back together. I got lucky and uh, was able to go together pretty nicely. All I did was just drill through, took some steel wire like this right here. Uh, let me see if I can get a, that one is actually under some cartilage and glued in, uh, two different ways. Both these wings are, uh, removable from the mount. You can take them clean off and, and clean them however you want to. This whole mount is completely, uh, uh, removable, collapsible, whatever you want to call it for whatever purpose. Uh, but that's what it is see the the teal wings versus the big goose wing big difference in birds here uh hopefully soon we'll have some wood ducks and some mallards uh maybe in the next couple days i'll start prepping those and, and get you a little video um i guess one other thing i could add is after after your wings are done and you have if you have a bit of bone like this one has a bit of bone sticking off I would recommend a Dremel tool or something light and then lightly go through and sand that bone away or s slowly grind that bone away. Uh, it shatters, you know, chicken bones, they splinter, they bird bones, that's just what they do. But if you can get a good good Dremel grinder in there, wear it away, you won't even see that bone. It will probably look a lot better if you didn't. Um, but yeah, this is just my experience so far. This is my first two. That's the third one I've done. so. Oh, actually, I have a couple right here. Here's my green wing. 
See, it looks kind of flat because, and it, the reason it looks flat and it doesn't have any dimension to it is because I just put it in a box and packed borax on top of it. That's that wing I'm talking about, or the bone that I'm talking about. Uh, and then it just kind of looks flat and lifeless. Doesn't look very nice. Uh, this is a another green wing that my buddy shot, and uh, I wanted to see what it would look like closed because this wing looked a lot better closed and uh let me see if i can i can explain this wing looks good closed but i missed a lot of the green bar there's a whole lot of green feathers in there that i could have spread out something like this and made look even better there's four Maybe five. Oh, there's one, two, three. But yeah, there's five good, solid green feathers in there. Now, I might be able to manipulate this with some wire. But like I said, hindsight, you'd rather lay your wings out in a more proper fashion. Uh, if I would have taken a little bit more care, I would have made sure that these feathers were down. <laughs> down feathers <laughs> pun intended i'll keep that one uh but yeah that's what it is very simple to do i don't know the longevity of these wings i don't know how long they'll last i imagine they'll last as long as you do so that's what i that's what i got i hope you guys enjoy it i hope you guys can do some stuff like this on your own i would check your local laws on possessing driftwood and stuff like that if you want to use driftwood not everywhere can you take driftwood from and there's some rules about it so i just don't want you guys to get messed up with the law or something stupid just because i was like hey go get some driftwood but yeah i got a bunch of cool sections of driftwood we're gonna make a big frame i'd like to make a like a super big big like like shelf frame that i could put bullets on and stuff like that um, and then just have covered in all sorts of Michigan species of, of ducks and, and goose and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'm going to try to get this video out really quick. Uh, just kind of went over it really fast. It's not hard to do. Uh, the longest part is waiting. Uh, just make sure you're in a nice dry ventilated area away from bugs. Um, and just make sure you, your open cuts on the birds stay clean and they... They dry out really well. I mean, it's, it's, most of that is common sense. Just go and check on it. If it doesn't look right, brush it out and go over it again with some more salt or borax. I like borax because they claim it keeps the smell down. I use salt with some squirrel feet. A little bit more difficult to use. So, borax like $5 a box. Get you some. Put some wings in them. Put them on a wall. Piece of driftwood. Give them to your auntie, your uncle. It's fun. Hope you guys enjoy it as much as I do. There will be more to come soon. Stay tuned. Till then.